need to order at 4.34 p.m. Yeah, hello, everybody. Um, let's, uh, we don't have any minutes. Roll call is going to be done with the drives of Rome in the background. Um, the agenda, correction and approval of the agenda for tonight. Now, if you've taken a look, and I'm going to say it one more time, besides emailing the agenda out earlier today, I've put the agenda link the and all the other links that you need for tonight's meeting in the chat box to view. Uh, if you take a look at the agenda, though, right now, you're going to see some slight uh, differences from how it usually looks. Um, that would be because we we're having an issue with making sure that we can keep quorum going and be able to get business done. Um, and so uh, with that said, we also lose a, a couple students to classes at 530. So the uh, idea was brought up and uh, the executive council uh, decided that what we're going to do is we're going to alternate weeks where we well, let me first first put it like this. We're going to take old business, new business, and non-business. It's going to be moved up below public comments. That's going to just, and this is all temporary while we're have, trying to get our ranks up. But it uh, that's going. Those three three things are going to be moved up right below public comments. And then on the alternating weeks, uh, we're going to uh, going to do this. We're going to rem. Uh, do only special reports and remove and not have regional and shared governance reports. Then the uh, uh, then the next week goes by. We're going to have the regional and shared governance reports and not the special reports. Um, we're still having the officer reports. We're still have you know uh, uh, and uh, all that, but we're trying to uh, make sure that we can keep things going and things done. I, does that hopefully that makes sense? Um, but I, um, but yeah, so I will entertain a motion at any time uh, to approve the agenda for tonight. Then I move to approve the agenda. All right, uh, motion made by Sam Spranick. Do we have a second? Uh, seconded by VP Moreno. All right, all uh, those in favor, we use, use the hand raising feature now and keep them up. Mm -hmm. All right, cool, cool. And we can put them down. And any other words opposed, put them up now. And down. And any abstentions, put them up now. All right, and motion's passed. And let's move on. Now we move down to public comments. And we'll let Tim Casper take it away. Well, thank you very much, President Green and members of the Senate. I hope you're all doing well uh, this afternoon and hope you've had some opportunity this week to get outside on some of the nice days that we've had after the deep freeze that we experienced for much of the month of February. <laughs> um, I don't have a lot to share with you this evening, uh, but I do have three items um, that I wanted to touch base on. Um, first, uh, COVID impact grants. So I think I was here three, maybe four weeks ago. Um, and made mention of the fact that due to uh, federal funding that was provided by the Congress at the end of calendar year 2020, uh, Madison College received funds uh, that it could use to support you and your fellow peers uh, directly in the form of a COVID impact grant. So last week, Monday, um, I sent a communication out to all students regarding that um, and our uh, financial aid office um, is in the process of making uh, awards to students. Um, some of those awards are uh, made automatically uh, based upon the student completing a FAFSA form. And if they were Pell eligible, uh, they were eligible for a larger grant amount, uh, 750. Um, if they were not Pell eligible, but were receiving other uh, financial aid, uh, they were eligible for a grant of up to $500. And for those students who did not complete the FAFSA at all, um, but demonstrated some financial need, uh, there is an application process uh, for those students um, to apply for and receive a grant of up to $250. So um, that we are doing this spring semester. Uh, we will do the same in the summer semester. The dollar figures will be less because the summer semester is a shorter week duration. Um, and then we will be doing it again in the fall semester. And if we have funding available yet at that time, we will be able to do it again in the spring of 2022. Um, depending on what the demand is um, 
in terms of, of students qualifying for these grants this current spring, this coming summer and the fall semester of 2021. Uh, second communication that went out to students. This one went out this week uh, earlier um, from the Dean of Students, uh, Geraldo Villa Cruz. It relates to uh, harassment and discrimination training um, as part of Title IX, which is a federal part of the Higher Education Act. Um, the college has an obligation to you as students uh, to provide you with uh, information about harassment and discrimination, uh, what those are so you can recognize them, as well as how to report them um, within Madison College. And so that is a, a training. It's a short video series um, that students are asked to complete by March the 26th. We have done a, one that is substantially similar uh, for our employees, and they, they were communicated that earlier in the month of February and have begun uh, doing that as well. And then finally, um, something to bring to your attention it might not be something that each of you are aware of, uh, but your classmates uh, who might be student athletes and your classmates who may be uh, participating in some of the health programs or some of our protective services programs where as part of their work they're going into a clinic, a hospital setting, into a law enforcement or firefighting setting um, as part of their education. Uh, oftentimes uh, those uh, employers are requiring that people have uh, a negative COVID test. Um, so last fall, we were referring students to some of the community organizations that were doing the testing services, um, but that presented challenges to students. One, um, they would have to you know, identify and get to one of those testing services. And the second thing is sometimes the lag time between doing your test and when you needed it back, the negative test to go do your practicum didn't line up. And so you, know, you might not have had that test result that you needed to, to do your uh, practicum as a health student or a protective services student. Uh, so we're beginning uh, to offer the testing service for those students, and there's about 700 of them this semester um, at the college. Um, so again, it's only for the purpose of those students who need a test uh, as part of their studies to go out and do their practicum or their internship. If any student is presenting with COVID-like symptoms, this is not the testing service for you. This is again only for this limited purpose of, of uh, those students who need that, need that negative test uh, to do their work. Um, we would you know, work with our providers um, to you know, find community-based health uh, organizations to provide the test um, if a student is presenting with uh, COVID-like symptoms. And so that's what I wanted to share this evening. And uh, any other questions about anything else I can try and answer? VP Moreno. Hi, Tim. So regarding the last um, part, the uh, a COVID testing screeners. Mm -hmm. So um, would those take place uh, on the health building section, right? Yep. So the yeah. health building will be, and, I, and it's somewhere on the first floor. I don't have the exact room number, but that's where we are directing those students, again, who, who need that for the purposes of their studies or they're a student athlete and, and for their participation in athletics need those negative tests on some regular basis. Any other questions? All right. I see, Eric says you always come in strong, Tim. <laughs> well, Good thank you. <laughs> um, and yeah, I took that um, Title IX uh, thing last night. I got that very, very uh, informative. I did it last, the year before, but it was uh, not didn't take that long. But yeah, I encourage everyone to. To do it prior to March 26, but yeah. awesome. Yeah. Well, so, thank you so uh, much for your endorsement of that. It took me about 25 minutes or so. I did mine last week, Wednesday, I think it was, and and so you know got through it. Um, it's useful. It's always useful, even as a refresher for those of us who have worked at the college for a long time, because there had been some changes in the policy and process um, in the last year. Agreed. Agreed. Okie dokie. Uh, advisor on. I usually don't, but um, we as employees got an email about um, COVID vaccines and it looked like student employees were included in the category of folks who would have a chance to sign up for them. Yeah, correct. So as you're following along in the newspapers or TV news, um, the, the federal government has delegated to the state governments how to prioritize individuals for the vaccine. Um, because we're a college, we are our employees are called what's called tier 1B as in boy. So the first tier were primarily hospital healthcare workers, 
um, that were directly interacting with patients on a regular basis. It did include some of our students who were going into those healthcare settings. So some of our students who might have been a nursing student or again, a police or firefighting student, uh, they may have qualified to participate in Tier 1A. Uh, tier 1B is the other college employees inclusive of uh, student employees. Um, all it means, and we don't fully understand this, but it means that we'll be able to, when they begin to open the doors for Tier 1B testing, um, you'll be able to contact a provider, um, health provider or one of the clinics um, and I assume we have to show some proof that we're a, a college employee um, and then we would qualify for uh, the vaccine. Um, the vaccine is not a requirement of anybody's employment at Madison College, um, but obviously health professionals would recommend that uh, that we get the vaccine. That's awesome. Um, and you all don't usually consider yourselves to be student employees, but you are. Um, you are on payroll. So as you um, are checking your student help email, um, look look out for that. I'm sure that was in your email today. And um, as the college knows more, you'll get more information at that email. So um, if you are hoping to get vaccinated, um, that could be a much earlier opportunity. So that's, mm -hmm. that's exciting news. It's happening. <laughs> it's happening. Very exciting. I just I just saw that email when you mentioned that uh Roz so I'm like, what? Uh so yeah, that is pretty cool. All right. Well, um uh, then I'm gonna say thank you for the updates. Um and uh, yeah, stick around and uh or not, it's your your call. Um <laughs> Well, I'll be able to stick around for about 15, 20 minutes and then I've I've got to depart to the next thing, but I'll I'll be hanging out for the next uh, little bit of business that you all have. Awesome. Thank you again, Tim. Um, all right, so now moving down to old business items, uh, the temporary new senator appointment procedure. Um, this we tried to kind of touch base on this last meeting, but we I think we lost quorum and we didn't want to rush it at that point. So if you look um, and thank you, advisor Rome. I bet you it's probably not going to show up for me because of my black screen thing that always does, whatever. Um, so uh, two meetings ago, not last, but the one before that, we brought this up originally. The idea being, again, summarizing in short, because we've already talked about this besides Joe, um, is to be able to qualify to become a senator, you've got to go, go to three uh, General Assembly meetings. And then you've got to do the procedure of, you know, explaining why you'd be a good fit, uh, you know, et cetera. Well, uh, being in this digital age as a temporary adjustment to making it a little bit more easier, plus a little bit more stress, uh, you know, takes a little bit of stress off. You can see how things run. And since I've got the website up with videos of all of our GAs, um, you can watch one of these videos uh, right up a little summary that goes to advise Rome. Um, showing that you've watched the video, um, and then you only have to go to two uh, uh, General Assembly meetings. Um, and it it kind of like makes it a little bit easier, a little bit of stress. So that was brought up two meetings ago. Um, I know that there was uh, at the time Senator Zebel had some questions about what specifically did you have, were we gonna you know requiring requiring to be watched, um, just any uh, uh, video or any GA past GA video. Um, and so we said that we executive council would come uh, back with this and identify in a little bit more detail the guidelines. Um, those guidelines being the videos would be stuff that would be related to um, again how the meeting operates some le legislations uh, things that show use of Robert's rules um, the shared governance um, you know it, the really the meat and bones of uh, you know of how Senate runs. Um, so, uh, you know, because we are, we have days where we don't really have much business and those, but those, that's really few and, and far between. So, um, this is the resolution. I don't know if you want me to read it off. I, I don't know, uh, advisor Rome. Um, uh, yes, technically you were supposed to read it aloud. Then you got, it. let me, uh, just, uh, yep. So from the beginning. All right, uh, the students, the formal motion, the student Senate will allow potential new senators to view one recorded meeting in place of, of attending one of the required three general assembly meetings. 
only for the duration of time when the Student Senate is hosting meetings exclusively in the virtual format. Section 1, Primary Reasoning, whereas some of the same benefits of attending the meeting live are not in place when the meetings are completely virtual, as students cannot connect informally before or after the meeting in the same way as meeting in person. Whereas there are benefits to a student being able to view a recording to familiarize themselves with the Student Senate and General Assembly and may increase their comfort in attending their first meeting live. Whereas Student Senate could identify recordings of past meetings that would highlight interesting meetings and meetings where policies or bills were passed. Whereas students would be expected to confirm that they watched the recording by submitting a written summary of the meeting to the Student Senate Advisor. Conclusion. Uh, can you move down a little bit for me, uh, please, Advisor? Roll? I don't know if you, okay, there we go. Conclusion, be it resolved by the Student Senate of Mass and College assembled that the Student Senate will allow potential new senators to view one recorded meeting in place of attending one of the required three General Assembly meetings, only for the duration of time when the Student Senate is hosting meetings exclusively in the virtual format. That said, um, we going for this vote. We have uh, anything that anyone else would like to add to this, discuss? But um, I think that you know we've given this three meetings basically. I think we've uh, all on board. I, I would uh, assume by now. Um, but do um, I'm gonna be honest? I'm a little rusty on the fact of this being a resolution. We don't do many resolutions. Um, we're making a motion to. How are we voting for this thing? I guess I should say. Yep. And I don't know, so, Jenna, VP Boy, if you want to add in on this or uh, uh, whatnot. You'll need a, a motion to approve the resolution. And then okay. similar to a bill, it's a roll call vote. Um, okay. So I can um, administer that, calling out each person's name. Cool. Um, but you will still need a motion, a second, discussion, voting. All right, awesome. Uh, Senator Sabranek, is that a motion to approve yep. this resolution? All right, a motion's, yep. oh, motion's been made. We have a second, looks like uh, Senator Zebel uh, seconds that motion. All right, all those, in, uh, any discussion? And don't forget, Senator Sabranek, your hand is still raised. Um, but seeing no discussion, all those in favor of approving this motion, uh, resolution, um, Put your hands up now and keep them up. All right, and you can put them down now. Oh wait, I'm sorry. I just I just blow that. I I'm sorry. Just um let you know again. I apologize. I'm gonna let advisor Rome call your name now, and you just say a nay or abstain. All right. So I'm gonna mute myself and be quiet. Perfect. So if you would like to approve this resolution, when you unmute, say aye. If you uh, do not want to approve this resolution, say nay. VP Boyd. Aye. VP Moreno. Aye. VP Syed is not here. Uh, Senator Ciardelli. Aye. Senator Zabronik. Aye. Willis is not here. Senator Yildiz. Aye. And Senator Zebel. Aye. Perfect. It passes. Awesome. Congratulations, everybody. And thank you for all your help in that. So then we can move on. Uh, we have no new business items, um, non-business slash housekeeping items. The Senate goals for the three-year plan uh, slash going over the budget uh, stuff. Um, so how, again, I'm going to ask you guys, Jerome, do you want me to take lead on talk, trying to talk about this, or do you want to take lead on trying to talk about this? Um, and, and or I guess as Senator Severini, since you're on the committee too, do you want to take lead on trying to talk about this? I guess we never talked about that earlier today. Sure. Um, um, sure. Sorry, my emails. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, we are presenting. Uh, we have. Um, President Green and Advisor Rome and I have uh, um, been meeting for the on Thursday afternoons for the past few weeks about 
discussing the three-year goal plan we have um we um the we we've been specifically working on the bottom two um the second goal is we decided to um write is uh outreach and engagement um let me just get it pulled up so i can look at the look at it um all right so all right. Matt, Sarah, I'm Sabrina, can I just um, kind of stop yeah. just for a sec? I don't, um, I don't think that uh, the rest of the senators, um, we're kind of talking specific to like, uh, I would start maybe a little bit more, go more forward to the beginning of the sections that we're talking about. Cause, and, um, does that make sense? Because they're, they're kind of at the same level that we're at where we've been talking about the goals and, and all that. Um, does, that make, does that make more sense to you? Um, not exactly. So, so for example, um, well, let me, let me, uh, for example, um, if we go back up to the, like, let's go back up to the first, um, uh, goal or, um, that we're going to be doing for the three-year plan, like starting there and stopping yeah. at goal two, um, yeah, and um, that lets us lead into everything. Yeah. So, uh, the goal one, which is, um, we, um, racial inequity is put, uh, at, at goal one, but, um, the reason um, I started at number two is because um, I believe uh, Yildiz and um, Senator Yildiz and uh, VP Moreno have been working on that in the Racial and Equity Committee. So I'm uh, President Green, uh, Advisor Rome, and myself have been working on goal two and goal three um, in the Admin and Finance Committee. So for anyone who's who might be a little confused about What's going on? That's kind of why I, st I started at uh, goal two. But anyway, so uh, goal two, which is um, the title is student outreach and engagement. So um, broadly, that means um, uh, that means we're um, the goal we're looking to pursue is um, making sure that the Senate is doing more to um, reach out to students uh, around the college um, and kind of like get more students involved in, in the Senate and also kind of overall just increase student awareness about the Senate. Um, for the strategy, for strategy one, um, it says uh, expand in-person slash on-campus awareness of the student Senate when more activity is permitted on campus. So right, um, as you can see, uh, we're um, because of the campus being shut down we are our our um abilities to uh increase awareness are definitely limited so um we are um but it's it's likely that the campus will open up within the next year so we're gonna definitely um increase our activities with or at least we are um, we'd like to pursue increasing our activities on campus when it opens up to in kind of uh, promote um, awareness as well as encourage ac um, activity within um, um, within the Senate first. Um, we're trying to increase um, awareness of the Senate to students on campus as well as kind of just promote, um, try to get them involved. So action step, um, the action, uh, President, um, President Green, should I read the action steps for strategy one? Um, how about I uh, step in for a second, read those okay. action steps, and let you start uh, the next uh, okay. strategy, the next strategy, right? Yep. Um, but yeah, you're doing a great job so far. Um, all right. So action steps: um, create a marketing campaign on campus. D is this what we read, right? Uh, on campus that promotes Senate as an advocacy body, utilizing visics. I'm not sure exactly what visics is, but I think we were talking about the monitors uh, in campus. Po uh, posters and tabling um, action step uh, to host events that connect students to the student senators and give them an opportunity to share concerns or learn more about joining the student senate. Um, and another action step being recruit regional senators and gather input from senators to from students at regional campuses by spending time on those campuses. Um, so yeah, me and uh, Senator Sabranek spoke a lot about a, a few different things uh, exclusively that, you know, prior to joining Senate, Student Senate at, at Madison College, 
that we didn't really know that scent really existed or what scent was or anything about scent. So kind of helping to um, find ways to incorporate more of sentence exposure um, so that we can, you know, always be recruiting better. Um, and then secondly, another thing we talked about was the fact that, you know, this is all based on when we do get back at some point, um, that it felt when some of the centers don't know about this because they didn't get a chance to do this, but we had, at one point we had General Assembly at Goodman South Campus, um, and that kind of, I thought that was a great idea. It helped, you know, create exposure, help show support to the Goodman South Campus. Well, I, I think that trying to find ways where we can reach out more to every campus and, you know, let all the students know from those campuses that you know, we're here and that, you know, participate, join in with us. So go ahead, uh, Sam Sabranek, um, with strategy number two. Yeah. So, um, Strategy number two is to expand student awareness and interaction with the student senate as social media and virtual spaces. So we're um, looking to also kind of um, expand our usage of social media to um, help uh, promote um, the senate. And I know that's especially these days with um, a lot shut down. We're definitely um, social media is definitely and the online area is definitely like the place where um, you go to uh, communicate something like uh, spreading awareness of the Senate. So that'll likely before everything starts opening up, that'll probably be where we'll, um, if we do pursue this goal, that will likely will be where we start off. And um, President Green, you'd like to uh, read the action step. Yeah, so um, the uh, action step, uh, provide training on social media best practices for the VP Public Relations and the PR Committee and implement strategy, strategies that they learn through, learn through that training. Uh, action step, create and send a monthly newsletter to students with updates from the Student Senate. Uh, action step, continue to host the virtual student sent office and, ex and explore ways to increase student traffic. Uh, action step, create videos about the student senate that can be shared on social media. So kind of quickly just uh, wrap that all that up in a bundle here. Um, yes, we are already utilizing social media a lot right now due to, its di due to being digital, but I kept using the phrase in the meetings, uh, aggressive, we have to have an aggressive uh, str uh, campaign strategy on this. Um, very repetitively, um, you know, not in an overwhelming way to the students, but a, a very, hey, we're, we're here. And one of those things uh, that Zebel actually had helped uh, come up with last year was sending out the monthly newsletter. I want to apologize about my dogs if you hear them. Um, but yeah, the monthly newsletter that kind of, always kept in the back of the students' minds that, hey, this, there's, there's this thing called the Student Center and our student life. Um, the, uh, vir the virtual office really doesn't stand to have any point if we can't get people in there, students in there. When, when we have had students in there, it's a very welcoming and opening place, finding ways to more promote that with keeping in mind that we're still uh, implementing good security practices that don't allow for things like intrusions within the Madison College. Uh, network. So that's another thing that's going to be looked at. But uh, the down to earthness, uh, who are your senators? You know, getting the, the creating the videos about student senate, uh, kind of cool about doing some things uh, about like, hey, this is the sen this would be the senate office. This is the this is where the you know text, but you know, talking about things that kind of feel more relatable, down to earth. You can you know feel more like you're interacting. A lot very similar to kind of the uh, the uh, walk throughout the campus thing. Uh, um, you know, you feel more like, yeah, yeah, I'm digital, but I'm not too far away. So that's kind of what we're going for here. Um, and so I do, we want to go down. I, anyone have any questions want to talk about anything? I mean, this ad. Yeah, let's pause here. Just to see if anybody had comments on this particular goal. And we did, um, if you remember, take this goal from the conversations when we did some breakout rooms a couple weeks ago. Um, talk about the yeah. So these are your ideas, just put into more words. <laughs> I 
On my side, I think they sound good. I think they they cover what we said. You're on mute, Ellen. Uh, I wasn't saying anything. Oh, <laughs> all right. Uh, sorry, my bad. Um, and we're always looking. I mean, obviously, we have, we present this next week, but we're always looking and keeping in back of our mind different ways and creative ways to um, continue uh, to get awareness and exposure to Senate. So always looking for stuff if something comes to your mind. Uh, but if everyone feels very comfortable with that, um, if no one has any objections, let me put it that way, then I would say that perfect. And uh, we can go down to strategy number three. All right. Um, so with uh, goal number three, um, we decided to make that, um, hold on, we decided to make that um, inclusivity in the Senate. Now, um, I'm going to note, so when I was uh, meeting with uh, President Green and Advisor Rome, I made my, um, I made, I um, told them, I think that um, when I hear, uh, it's important when we talk about the word inclusivity, that it's not just a a flowery word because, or like, there's like a lot of ambiguity or a lot of, um, there's a lot um, you can interpret from the word inclusivity. So we want to make sure that we um, make it uh, very clear what we mean when we talk about inclusion or inclusivity, because a lot of times it's kind of used as just like a flowery word or just some word um, that's really doesn't really have much meaning. So um, with, uh, that we want to i will continue to talk um to talk more about all this when we go through the strategies but overall we um we talk about inclusivity we mean that we are inclusive of people of a variety of different backgrounds whether it be race or whether it be sex whether it be politics or whether it even be like uh um your program or whatever because um in terms of uh, the makeup of the Senate, um, there are some um, disproportionalities in the Senate, especially within like the different um, programs. Like I know that Advisor Rome has told me that um, that most of the members of the Senate are mem are on the liberal arts program. There's like a lot of lack of representation in the um, in like kind of more the technical programs. Like and is. We believe that the Senate should um, be representative um, of members of a variety of um, a variety of backgrounds, including race, including uh, um, beliefs, or including um, and inc even uh, um, interests and programs. And we believe that when we talk about inclusivity, we need to make sure that we are defining what we are talking about and. Inclusivity, we believe, means that people are respectful of everyone and that we are we tolerate people who are different from us and also that we are we make sure that people are treated um, fairly as individ uh, as individuals and all that. So um, with that, I'm going to let uh, president I'm going to sorry, I forgot to read strategy one. Strategy one, review Senate governing documents, policies, and norms with a critical eye toward creating a more inclusive and equitable organization. And with that, I'm going to let uh, um, President Green read the first action step. Awesome. Um, all right. So um, the action step, create opportunities for student members to connect and discuss their views on topics that are discussed in the student Senate. This could include creating a structure for meetings that is less formal than, in, than exclusively using Robert's Rules of Order and completing the interest-based problem solving. And then action step, review student senate bylaws with the Madison College equity lens. So um, I, I touch on what Senator Spranick was kind of saying. The, think of it like this. Um, we don't have to... We don't have to agree with anyone's opinion in this room, in this, I'm going to call it virtual room, all right? We can have different beliefs of anything uh, about anything. Um, 
but I can say that I accept every one of your viewpoints, and I'd hope that you do think the same, think at least the same way. Don't have to agree to accept, though, that somebody has a view that is even different or the same as yours. It's just when we walk out of this room, though, we are going to still be ourselves. But when we walk into this room, we have to work together and utilize our time to be able to do the best for the students. But if you don't feel comfortable and uh, if you feel like there might be negative repercussions towards uh, just honestly saying what you think and you feel, well, really, in the end, besides it hurting the person who is going to withhold saying what they honestly think, in the end, it's really going to hurt the students. Uh, you know, again, that's who we're helping right now, because the possibilities of something happening based off of even a, a statement that someone disagreed or didn't disagree with, it still brings something. It still brings progression, still brings productivity to helping the students. So without, you know, we want to make sure everyone feels comfortable and able to talk and at least accept uh, that, you know, we have views regardless if they're the same or not. So that's kind of what we're talking about. Um, and uh, we're trying to get to on that. So, uh, uh, Senator Sabrinek, you want to go and move on to the yep. next strategy number two? Yep. Strategy number two, recruit students to the student senate that represent the diverse student body at Madison College. Now, when we talk about diversity, which is a word that's, I think um, often used similarly to inclusivity, which is it's kind of just a flowery word that oftentimes people it it kind of oftentimes when it's used it just looks good on like I don't know like a bumper sticker or a t-shirt. When we use these words, we need to make sure that we know what we're talking about when we're using these words. And when we say diversity, we mean diversity of all kinds, whether it be a racial diversity, political diversity, religious diversity, or um, diversity of interests and all of that. So um, with this, we want to make sure that the Student Senate is representative of the college um, in all in all ways. So like, and um, I'm going to let uh, President Green um, uh, read the first act, act, read the really the only action step for this one. Thank you, Senator Sabrinek. So yeah, the action step, networking with student groups to increase the diversity of potential senators, identity-based, academic, political, religious, athletic teams, performing arts, recreation slash hobby, clubs, and programs under RISE. So uh, it, to quickly make sure that that makes more sense, if it doesn't, uh, yeah, we have a lot of LET students in here, for example. I'm not one of those, and I know Eric's not one of those, but we want to get people who may want to just be a, get and try and get a technical degree or, um, or you know, someone to do a lot of clubs. There's a, um, you can do, we want to get a wide variety. We have people from athletics. I don't, I don't know if there's ever been someone from athletics in a Senate, um, but we want to make sure that we're fully getting the wide range of the voice for the students in here we we so interacting reaching out looking at uh ways like even trio students seeing if those trio students could uh would be interested in, uh interested so go uh, you can go ahead uh send us a break with strategy number three yeah so strategy number three um provide opportunities for student members of senate to learn about and talk about equity and inclusion so i'm gonna let um you, uh, President Green, uh, read the action steps. So um, action step, create shared expectations on how to engage in a constructive dialogue. Action step, conduct trainings with the Student Senate on diversity, inclusion, and implicit bias. Action step, provide opportunities for senators to have ongoing dialogue on diversity, inclusion, and implicit bias. So again, to kind of uh, go slightly in more depth, um, we have to define expectations as to what we feel comfortable, to, you know, like you walk into a room and you say, okay, I want to have a conversation with a bunch of, you know, with all of you. What is okay? Where are the boundaries? Where is crossing the line? You know, defining what exactly is, is with an acceptable range that everyone can live with on how to have a productive conversation. 
Some people view things one way, some people view things another way. So making sure we can come to an, a good set of ground rules. Um, that's kind of, um, you know, that way that makes everyone feel comfortable and not feel like they have to withhold. The conduct trainings, we've done some of that. You know, we've, we've uh, already gotten the chance to have uh, one uh, uh, training, but, um, you know, continue on doing that. Um, find other trainings on top of that, uh, including the uh, interest-based problem solving, which I, I would I would very much um, tell everyone to check that out um, the, in the, the email about that. You can maybe send it back out again, but I think you're going to realize how much of that thing, that, that interest-based problem solving idea is the way of uh, being able to negotiate is very productive and um, it, it's a lot we can bring over into our meetings with that. Um, and then, you know, provide those opportunities, um, continue to make it feel comfortable, make it feel like you can talk about, you know, things that's, um, that's, you know, not feeling like you're, there's going to be times when it's going to be awkward. Let's put it this way. There's going to be times when we're going to feel pretty awkward about having a conversation. If one person disagrees with something and another person agrees one other way, that's part of the process of negotiating and talking and discussing there's nothing else that you can expect other than to have good expectations of what's okay, fair ground to talk about what's, you know, but we want people to be able to have constructive um, dialogue where sometimes it does get uncomfortable, but we don't want to shun any senator from feeling like they can't speak their mind. That's what this is. We're speaking our mind. Um, so, yes, that I'm going to stop there and say, uh, what's the um, what's the opinion in the room right now? What's the thoughts on this uh, goal number three, inclusivity in student senate? And please speak openly. I would say that um, if, and in a way, I feel that it kind of like I don't know could could like relate specifically with the racial inequity committee. So I do feel that. If there is anything like specific that we would like to either expand on or, um, you know, now that we can see it and we have discussed it on the GA, perhaps even um, on the racial inequity committee, we could kind of just think about things that perhaps might not fall under this action step realm, like trying to also address those as well. And uh, Yeah, I mean, this is a good point that you bring up. Because this, I think Senator Sabranek asked something very similar to this uh, earlier today. Um, the racial inequity is the external facing side of trying to help students in, in, within racial inequity. Um, this strategy, this goal is internal, right? Again, we have a lot of programs. We have a lot of students from different backgrounds. We have a lot of students of different genders, different identities, different, you know, whatever. Um, we need, if we're only getting one voice or, uh, you know, from one area, how can we be making decisions for everybody to the best of our ability? So uh, I would say that it does seem that inclusivity gets used a lot when we're talking about racial issues, but no, inclusivity is everybody, everybody. Um, and so it's an, we're talking, how can we internally make it? So that we're getting the information, the trainings needed, um, uh, you know, the connections needed so that we're getting a very diverse voice that represents the sum, the best sum of the students. Does that make more sense as to why that the, the two, two different things and not more related? Because, yes, I can understand where you I can understand that very much. So, but yeah, we're trying to fix. We can't do the best that we can do if we don't know how to do it. We don't have the tools to do it. And uh, or we don't have the, the senators, the students to do it. So, um, yeah, so hopefully that helps answer a question. But what we're looking for now on this one is we're looking for, I'm going to say it again, do we have any objections with this being a goal? If we have no objections, then that's, then that's what we're going to be going with. Looks like we don't have any objections. Then that's great. Thank you right. on that one. Let me talk about the budget. So 
Um, the budget that was allocated for this academic year was $38,237. We are not going to spend nearly that much money. Um, most of it is um, for stipends. Um, so the budget request for next year is going to be much smaller, 26% less, in fact, um, with 28,425. Um, that's sort of what we landed on as a happy medium of hopefully being able to do some stuff in person, but recognizing that a lot of the things that Senate does just doesn't require money. Um, so the stipends, this amount is remaining the same. This covers exactly what we need if we have a full Senate. Um, travel, this previously has been $6,000, but we've decreased it, hoping that we can participate in some activities. Um, based on the way that the budget works, um, the majority of this money would probably be spent at the very end of the 21-22 school year for a summer conference that Senate will hopefully be able to go to um, summer 2022. I think there's a little bit more hope that travel might be possible in spring and summer next year. Um, and then hopefully we can also um, participate in some virtual activities. Um, the Legislative seminar still has a cost, whether it's in-person or virtual. Um, and there might be other trainings like we talked about with public relations um, that we could um, have some money to spend on some professional development, um, virtual likely, at least until spring. Um, postage, this was not in the budget before, but given the world we're living in, um, there's much more of a need to mail things. Um, this year, we mailed out like a new senator package for everybody. Um, it included the jacket and a copy of some training materials and the constitution. Um, we'd like to be able to do that again. Um, and then as we have giveaway items to mail out to students, now that we have all those items, um, we'll need some money to actually send them out. Food previously was $800, um, bumped down to 500, just with the hope that we can do something next spring. Um, food has typically been for um, some for internal Senate events, some for like tabling, giving away like granola bars and stuff, and then collaborations with other groups um, for like end of semester stress, less event, um, or things like that. Memberships and subscriptions. Um, this is what the WSG membership was this year. It'll probably be about the same or a little less. Um, supplies, this includes um, if we need to get anything, um, you know, buy envelopes to mail things out, um, or if we're back in person and all our whiteboard markers no longer work and we need to buy a bunch of new ones, um, or supplies related to events, or um, we probably won't need any giveaway items next year since we bought a lot this year, but just in case. Um, copying and printing, um, this was also reduced um, because we probably won't print as much, but we will print things to send out to new students. Um, so that's still a significant cost. And then hopefully in the spring, posters and things for being on campus. Advertising, um, we like to keep our positive relationship with the student newspaper um, by supporting them with our um, ads. Um, this should cover um, three or four ads each semester um, for the student newspaper. And contract services, about 200 of this is for the website um, renewal. And then um, if we are able to travel in the spring, um, we sometimes rent vehicles to travel to regional campuses and uh, Wisconsin student government meetings. So um, this I think is remaining the same because the cost of the website went up a little bit. Questions? All right, this is what will be presented next week. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Uh, what about like graphic design requests? Well, wouldn't, I believe that that would be in, um, what would- uh, That has no cost. That has no cost, you know, so. I don't really worry about that, Senator Zebel, but I, I really, really, really do appreciate you bringing that uh, up so that we're all aware about that. But yeah, no cost. Um, so thank you, everyone.
Thank you, thank you, thank you. That was very important to do. So let's continue on very quickly. Is printing it? Yep, that is true. Good, very valid point. So uh, moving down now, officer and committee reports, executive council. What did we talk about yesterday? Um, nothing really new except this resolution and this plan, this three-year plan, discussing some of this three-year plan. And um, am I missing anything else here, Advisor Rome? We didn't really discuss a whole lot different. There wasn't really a lot to talk about. Correct? Um, everything yes, no. we've already covered tonight. That's what I thought. That Great. So that allows me to go on and move on. Admin finance, basically, that's you just heard all of that tonight as well. That's what we've been working on. Um, Legislative Rules Committee, uh, VP Boyd, I'm going to let you um, uh, take it away. Um, take it away. Sure. So I guess the general information I have for Senate, yeah. I had shared with the Executive Council yesterday. Um, but I will need to resign from Senate because I will be dropping my courses for spring. So I will no longer be eligible um, at the credit requirement. So I'm absolutely happy with any of the any of the plots I have my hands in. Um, if people have questions, you know, I'm not going completely off the grid. So I will be available to follow up and answer you know, any sort of questions, concerns, any logistics, um, anything I can still help with. I just won't be able to serve in my current capacity. Um, but other than that, that's that's all I have for you. All right, thank you, VP Boyd. And yes, very, very unfortunate and sad um, for you to have to step down like that. Um, all right, Team Development Committee, VP Moreno. No report this week. Okay, that was a confident confidence. Uh, Public Relations Committee, VP Said. Oh, wait, he's, he's not here. Not Boy, here. I guess he's so used to saying. <laughs> all right, uh, all right. So. Then special reports, advisor report, advisor Rome. Keep recruiting people. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Nine days till the applications are due. Awesome. Uh, student activities board. Well, I just speak and say nothing. Uh, we present next week. Uh, that's 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 what's going on. Uh, all right. So moving down, housing accessibility update. Vacant digital equity update. Do you have anything really going on, San Jose Bell, or can we just move down and finish this meeting strong with quorum? Yo, go down. We're good. No uh, more. All right, cool. Uh, racial and equity committee. Uh, hold on one sec. No, no textbook affordability. Senator Willis isn't here for public safety committee. Uh, those virtual officers, please make sure you're doing them and getting them all done, meeting your requirements. If you haven't done your student presentation, get it done. It has, it, it is, we're giving you too much leeway here. Info sessions, promote those info sessions. Come to them if you can, the more the better. Now, the remaining time, I'm gonna say, actually, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna adjourn this meeting right now quickly, and then I'm gonna go back to racial inequity and let you finish out the rest of the time, okay? So, I will entertain a motion right now to uh, adjourn the meeting. So there's a motion made. Anyone want to make a motion right now? Motion's been made by VP Moreno. Do we have a second? Seconded by Senator Yildas. All those in favor, use the hand raising feature now and keep your hands up. All right, Joe, Mina, use your hand, hand raising feature, use it. All right, perfect, awesome. You can put down, the meeting's been adjourned. Now please, uh, Racial and Equity Committee, you guys have, technically nobody has to stay, but I'm gonna say you're gonna have to stay for this, all right, because we, I'm doing our best, but at 5.30, the students that have to leave can leave. Um, but yeah, Rachel and Equity, go for it. Okay, so Mina, we can definitely share it together. Um, due to the fact that I might have to leave for class at some point between the conversation. But we had a meeting today to go over the resolution that we have to change the name of the committee. So we worked a little bit on that. And, and that's something that we want to have planned at least ready for next week. Then we also went over the three-year plan, having like that draft ready as well. So we both met and we had the opportunity of meeting with Sylvia as well. So she had the opportunity to join this time. And we already set a meeting time for future meetings as well. Uh, if anyone would like to join, it's, it's Thursdays, 2.30. Um, and the idea is that, yeah, we went specifically over the three-year plan, having those goals ready. 
we have um, everything written down from what I feel that we, the only thing would be to kind of use the appropriate words and drafting it, kind of synthesizing everything. And so, yeah, I mean, if you want to also uh, give a little share before I just jump off the meeting. <laughs> yep. So there is a lot of progress that happened just today. So I'm very confident we'll be able to get that done as soon as possible. Um, it was amazing that Sylvia was able to join us today. It gave me a lot more hope in order to get, okay, we have one person in, we have the loop going. So that gives us opportunities to start recruiting for more and more people once we get the bill, uh, the resolution for the name change uh, completed. So overall, I have very high hopes for the Racial Inequity Committee and I see us moving forward in a really great direction. Cool, cool, cool. That sounds exciting and uh, looking forward to it. So, all right, well, that's the, if that wraps it up for you, uh, both of you, then um, yes, the meeting is adjourned. Uh, I'm gonna, it adjourned like a few minutes ago, but I'm just for the recording, 5.30 p.m. It, the meeting's been adjourned. Um, so you guys have a great rest of your day, evening, the next day after that, the day after that, then the day after that, we'll see you on Monday. Please get those office hours, virtual office hours done. All right, peace out. Later, Hi, Gators. Hi. Hi. President Green, I actually, oh, it's frozen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hi, Ali. Um, <laughs> I do have a question. I was going to ask President Green, but this is good. Uh, I am not sure what to do for the virtual hours. I keep hearing to get those done, but I have no idea how I'm even supposed to get my virtual hours. You're on mute, by the way. Yep, I am. Um, it looks like Joe has the same question. Um, so I um, need to give both of you some more instruction on that. I completely missed that in... Um, that long email I sent both of you. So I will send you both more information. Um, so you, did I, I added you to the like calendar event, right? But that's yes. as far as I got. Okay. Um, so what you'll do is um, you'll pick one hour each week um, that you can commit to being like hosting the virtual office. Okay. Um, you'll open up that calendar invite um, link during that time. Um, and then, um, just kind of hang out. Usually we don't have a lot of people stopping by unless you've like invited them. Um, so if you want to, you know, work on stuff with Barbara or Sylvia, that's a good time to just have set aside and work on it. Um, or people are thinking about joining Senate and you want to invite them or something like that. Um, and then, it, and then you probably know kind of how to log it from that video, right? Yeah, for the most part. Um, okay. Still trying to understand. I think some more information on that could be helpful. It's better. Okay. To, yeah. Yeah. So um, really, it's just um, sending me whatever time you want, and it only has to be one hour. Thank you. Um, yeah. So sorry about yesterday. I had so much going on that day. Totally I could, fine. So. Um, well, that's all my questions then. Thank you. I look forward to seeing that email, and I'll get my virtual hours set up. Perfect. All right. All right. Have a good one. You too.